What the hell is cinematic? Ah! The word cinematic has been so overused, I can't stand it anymore. I run two filmmaking coaching sessions and as much as I want to, right, I really cannot use the word cinematic. Why? Because I don't want to dilute the meaning of the word cinematic for my students. Why am I getting so worked up about this? Let me explain. Ever since I got into the game of filmmaking, the main thing that runs in my head is how do I make a video look good? There are so many elements to what makes a video good and it would take me a century to go through all of them. But in the very beginning, the main concern was how to make the video I shoot look good. So I did what anyone would do. I went on YouTube to get inspired and I typed the word cinematic in a search bar. Now remember, this was back in 2017. So the first thing that pops up when you type cinematic in a search bar is this. Sam Coder. Okay, so this video, this video changed the game of cinematic YouTube forever. I mean, it even changed the game of social media video for better and worse. But the kind of impact this had on the cinematic YouTube community was majestic. See, this is a niche video. It's a travel film, something that's usually a bit more personal, something you would share with your family or friends. But it has 6.7 million views. Million. The number of people he inspired thereafter is really no joke. Everyone was doing these zoom transitions. I remember my recommended being filled with these zoom transition tutorials in terms of color grading. The M31 LUT started blowing up and seriously, I mean everyone was using this LUT in their videos to get the Hollywood blockbuster look. Permission to carry on, Sergeant. Carry on. And then the next big thing was shooting in slow motion. Suddenly, everyone started shooting in 60 FPS because you could slow down your footage by 50% to get that slow, ethereal look that Sam had in his videos. And then, Sony cameras started blowing up because they gave you affordable cameras with which you could shoot 120 FPS. And then that was it. Since 2017, the world of amateur filmmaking had changed. No more was it about getting a certain look of a movie or was it about understanding a director's storytelling. It was all about shooting slow motion or getting a gimbal to get steady shots or spamming LUTs onto your videos to get a certain colour here and there. And unfortunately, I was one of those victims as well. I got my Sony camera, I got my gimbal, I spammed LUTs on my videos, yet my videos still suck. The word cinematic has two parts to it, cinema and tick. From my understanding, when you call a footage cinematic, it means that you should be able to play in a theatre and it should look natural. You shouldn't be able to tell that it was shot on an iPhone or a Sony camera. It should just look like it's straight out of a movie scene. And this is what I am working towards every single day. But the fact of the matter is that when you're looking to make cinematic video, right, it's not just about how the video looks, but the way it feels. There's different aspects to it. There's lighting, there's sound, there's performance and all that nonsense. And here is where I messed up. I felt like if I was to get a Sony camera, something would click in my head and then suddenly I'll become a god at making videos. Main camera, USR. Lens we're rocking on that, 15 to 35. That's pretty much all I use just about all the time. If you want the very best point shoot on the market, get the Sony RX100. Figure out what, you know, is this the best filmmaking camera on the market? Casey Neistat, one of the greatest, if not the greatest cinematic filmmaker on YouTube once said that Gear doesn't matter But then again, it's easy for me to say that all you need is your phone to make great content and at the same time, use my $3,000 camera rig to make YouTube videos So, am I saying that Casey is being hypocritical? Well, no. These people, they've made their careers on YouTube and have some form of power over the filmmaking community, at least on YouTube. Many people look up to them, including myself. And whatever advice they provide is, at the end of the day, coming from a source of goodwill. They really do want to help us. But what happens is that, more often than not, this advice gets lost in translation. At least it did for me. You see, this idea that you need LUTs, you need slow motion, you need good cameras to, to have cinematic footage really just stems from them being so damn good at what they do. They are masterful storytellers and they use these elements of slow motion and colour in a purposeful manner. There is a reason why the night shot is blue in colour. There is a reason why Casey would use 5 cuts in 1 second. They are masterful storytellers and they use these effects to serve their story. Great storytellers have a purpose behind every effect, if you may. And I feel that that's what makes a video cinematic to do everything you can in your capability to achieve a certain effect. The problem is that when these influential people like Casey, Peter, Sam Calder, when they come up with their videos or their pieces, we as the amateurs try to emulate them in hopes that our videos will be just as cinematic as theirs. By adding a teal and orange LUT, I'm trying to emulate Sam Calder in hopes that my videos will look like his because 
the yardstick for cinematic I have set is Sam Coder. But is it wrong to copy? There's a great quote in the world of self-help, fake it till you make it. The essential idea is that if you copy another person's work or fake a trait for long enough, you will eventually acquire that trait. For example, if you want to become more confident, the only way to do so is to act like you are. Talk to more people, straighten your back even when you don't want to, act like you have balls of steel even when you don't have any. Soon enough, you will forget that you are pretending. And I think that this concept can be greatly applied within film as well. By, by faking Sam Kohler's footage, by doing the quick cuts of Casey Neistat, by doing the low light video of Make Art Now, I think you tend to develop a unique style for yourself. Even though it may not be completely original, you will still understand the game. Do slow motion for long enough and you will understand when to use it appropriately. Add LUTs long enough and you will understand how colours give you certain emotions. The main concept is to steal like an artist. The sad reality is that I only got to understand I don't need an expensive camera to make videos only after getting the expensive camera. Phone cameras have gotten so good nowadays like iPhone's video quality. Chef's kisses bruv. I did a test with one of my film classes of more than 40 students and I showed them a piece of phone footage and then a piece of footage from my camera as well. And I asked them to tell me which one looked better. Majority voted that the phone footage looked better. Now you see this piece of footage was recorded on my 6 year old, 6 year old Galaxy Note 5 blew my Sony camera away. The friction for making videos on phones has really reduced because phone manufacturers try to give you the best video output straight from the camera app. Whereas on a DSLR, it's a completely different story. Jokers like me, we like to shoot in flat profiles, which means that there's barely any contrast, there's barely any saturation. I mean, it gives me the flexibility to add my own color and my own contrast, but it lengthens the workflow by a lot. I'm just gonna read off my notes here. I feel cinematic should be seen as a verb and not really an adjective. When I say cinematic footage, it means that the director does everything within a capability, with purpose, to curate a shot that 100% supports the story. I repeat, it means that you do everything within your capability to curate a shot with purpose that 100% supports the story. I will never call a shot cinematic just because it looks cool. Okay. Maybe. But the point is, it's important to focus on the core of a video instead of the aesthetics. Anyone can make their clips look good, but it's the real storytellers that can make the story pop. One singular greatest example is Make Art Now on YouTube. His care towards shooting with anamorphic lenses just to get a certain look on video does not distract from the main story of his latest film, Anamorphia 2. So what the heck is cinematic? I think within TikTok and YouTube, the definition of it has been diluted. By no means is the new meaning wrong, the focus has changed. There is a whole new depth and understanding of that word if we want to get into it. I mean, Mercedes wouldn't use the TikTok inspired video as the commercial, right? Let's get down, let's get down to business. Give you Okay, I don't know anymore, man. The point is, if you want cinematic, learn from the directors. Take interest into crafting stories and finding the most effective way of getting your message across to your audience. Think twice, think thrice when you make your shot. Don't do it just because it looks cool. Create meaning. And with that, see you champs. <laughs>